Hey everyone, I'm Eric Chen, a third year in the Candidates Edis Group at Northwestern University. And today, I'll be answering a question that we commonly get from our new students. For chalcogenide synthesis, how do we avoid unwanted reactions with atmospheric gases such as oxygen and water vapor? And the answer is that we carry out our reactions in fused silica ampules. And so today, I'll be showing you all how we do that. First, we select four foot rods of our desired outer and inner diameters. Typically, most of our one to two gram reactions can be carried out in tubes of 13 millimeter outer and 11 millimeter inner diameters. So I'll be demonstrating on one of those 1311 tubes. Since I typically use tubes that are eight inches long, I mark all six of those increments. Then, I score the rod using our diamond saw at every other mark or every 16 inches. Scoring even lines without breaking through and adding just a touch of water helps the rod snap evenly. From a four foot rod, I should end up with three 16 inch rods, marked down the center. All right, now for the best part. Our torches use a combination of methane and oxygen. So I start with a healthy dose of methane, then oxygen, then another twist of methane, and then more oxygen, until you can hear the flame crackle. Don't forget to use the correct shades. All right, remember those 16-inch tubes marked down the middle? If we melt them down in the center, we'll end up with two 8-inch tubes. To prevent my reactants from sticking to the inside of my tube, I prefer to roll up some foil as a liner. And now that I have a liner, my reactants are ready to be poured in. Now, it's time to put our tube under vacuum and seal it. We begin by attaching the appropriate adapter for hooking up the tube to the vacuum line. The vacuum is maintained by a rotary vane pump with the assistance of our liquid nitrogen trap. We slowly open up our tube to the vacuum, monitoring the readout as we go. Sometimes it helps to tap our sample to prevent the powders from bumping too much. When the pressure reads less than 10 to the negative 2 millibar, a sufficient vacuum has been achieved for sealing.
I'll run my torch along the sides of the tube, just to knock off any remaining water on the surfaces. Then, two inches from the top of the tube, I'll start by making a divot. I'll turn the tube and repeat until there are four divots, caving in the glass to form a seal. When the glass is fully caved in, I'll begin spinning the tube while keeping the torch on the concave glass. At a certain point, the glass will be molten enough that the sealed sample end of the ampule will turn independently from the rest of the silica tube, allowing you to eventually twist off the sealed ampule. Just like that, all done and sealed. And so, there you have it. How to cut and seal fused silica ampules for reactions under vacuum. If you have any other questions, just give us a heads up and we might just end up putting another video together just for you.